here I am at Mount Gambier Bowls Club in Mount Gambier, South Australia, which is in Australia. And this is a commission work. It's going to be the Centennial Tower. This is a painting that I've done as a mock-up of what it is. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to put a few of the basic guidelines in so everyone can sort of say, oh yeah, I can sort of see where that's going to fit in and just so get perspective viewpoints, that kind of stuff, eye line. So, stand by, just set, just keep it rolling. Very basic lines in. Now you can sort of see, if you look at this picture, Brad, can you bring it over here for a sec? This is the picture I'm gonna work off. And there's our skyline. So I'm gonna put that in right now. And I think that's gonna be a, good, a nice distance from there to there. I wanna steer clear of this column thing so I think if I just start let's see what that looks like that's actually a good height for the sky do you reckon pretty cool all right so there's the skyline goes along there like that that's close enough and then I've got the next line which is See that line there, Brad? See this line where the horizon meets the hill? Yep. I'm just going to have a little bit of green in there. No, just for the sake of the exercise, just to colour it off. I get these basic skylines and things in, and I've got an idea of the angle. Now you can see there's a little bit of an angle to that. So it comes across like this. So there's my baseline there. Where it comes to there comes across to there like that. It comes down the hill slightly and then goes back up again. So then what I've got this the uh, the lake itself. Now I want to put that lake on this side just to stay away from that column. But at the same time I'll put, a, I'll put the column about there somewhere. So if I have the lake here we're in business. So the hill comes down to here, down to there somewhere, and the lake will sit about there, I reckon. You like it, Jason? Sounds good. Okay, so that's all cool. That means the, the, this tower, the tower here, is, if you imagine the width of the the height of the tower and the height of the tower, it's almost two towers high compared to the width of, and length of the lake. So if I go there, there, and then I think that's the line there. This will make sense in a sec. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's not far off. Okay, cool. So the trick with this is to get it, get it level like using a plumb bolt. There you go, I've used my plumb bolt, see? And I think it's this one. Now depending on the distance between those two lines, depending on the distance, to here it's pretty well even. That's not too bad. It's slightly wider on the other side. So if that's one distance, that's another distance, slightly wider is there. And there we go. Now the problem with that is it's not straight because the tower curves in at the bottom and in at the bottom. How's your video going? Yeah, going all right. Good, so, yeah, makes sense. Yeah, absolutely.
the price you pay for being an artist. Halfway up this hill, I've still got a long way to go to get to the tower, but Mount Gambier Bowls Club, I hope you appreciate my attention to detail. Let's go. excited because the flag's up which means that the tower is open and little does he know this guy's actually in my painting yes. do, you know, do, you know you're, do you know you're in my painting oh i do at the mount gambia bowls club oh the tower is yep hey. i'll show you in a minute so what I'll get you to do, Ben, when you're free, yeah. this window here is where I want to go over that window, just explain how it works. It's a double hang hung sash. Right. Yeah, so don't stand, just stand over here a bit. There we go. And yeah. then pretend you're looking looking uh, to, to lift the window. Well, it's still working, so they still will if you don't. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, yep. that, oh was so it's still got the, like, the rope pulley on it. Yeah. Um, but, if you're gentle, yeah. Still the original fittings. A few coats of paint, needs a bit of love. Of course. But it, that's still working, so I built the outside framework and the stone and then set the whole piece in. Yes, that's what's happened, yeah. most certainly. So if I look at the thickness of the block, mm. that's actually a double block, isn't it? Yeah. So I've got to get that into my painting because I've only got a single block and then the window. Yeah. Actually, how many people have carved their name into the top of this thing? There is some naughty great grandparents. How cool. Any, uh, there's no dates on any of these carvings. Is there? One or two, yeah. Oh yeah, I can't see any the dates. The oldest one I've seen is 1908. 1908. How cool is that? There's a bit of that covered up now with, that, with the metals. It's a bit hard to see everything. But... Oh, thank you, Ben. That's, that's good. All right, I'll go down and do my posts now. President of the Mount Gambier Bowls Club, I'm the current president. And after um, Phil joined in with the Bowls Club, we had a bit of a chat. And, and became, I still can't bowl. And it became known that Phil was a bit of a painter. Mm. But did we know how good a painter Phil was? Not really, until he showed us what he could do. This is what he could do. This is absolutely world-class, stunning artwork. And we are so appreciative and thankful for what you're doing for the club, Phil. And thank you very much. I really appreciate wait. that. That means so much to me. We cannot wait to have an opening, and we'll get everyone in Mount Gambier here to see how good a work this is. <laughs> so thanks, Phil. Thank you. My pleasure. My pleasure. I love doing it. A lovely group of people. I've really enjoyed every minute of it. I said I'd finish it in a year. I'm probably close to about a month being, you know, yes. to finish it. And um, I think it's it's coming along beautifully. Some paintings, John, you've really got to push through. This just flows. This is just flowing. I do every a couple of hours a day. Every time I come in yeah. and see the progress you've made, the little bits, the lines through the, mm -hmm. the city mm -hmm. and now the tower, it's yep. just amazing. I, I, I so admire what you're doing. I oh, thank you. I really appreciate it. I really it. do. So. You know what I love about the best? 
is people come in and they say, oh, when I was a boy, I used to swing <laughs> off the rope over there near the river and, yeah. you know, all this. Sort of, and then I brought the sand in to build the playground. Yeah. And, and everyone's got a story. It's probably... Brian did the balustrading, for example. Probably a good amount of population in Mount Gambier that conceived up and around that area. Yeah, <laughs> everyone's got a story. If you've ever been here or live here or grow up here or whatever, yeah. everyone's got it. If you grew up here, you've got yeah. a story. If you visited here, you've got a story. Well, here's my story. Go. Okay. Long, long time ago when we were young, mm -hmm. there used to be an event on, held on the lake here yes. called the Walk on Water. Yep. But... You used to have to pay to get into it. Okay. And as kids, we didn't have money. We were on push bike. Sure. So Potter's Point is about here. Yes, that's right. There's a water tank so up there. So we left our yep. bikes there. Yep. And we walked all the way down. Yep. It wasn't much of a path. It was just through the scrub. <laughs> and then all the way to the walk on water. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Well, this means a lot to my daughter as well because she does this. It's called the Sugarloaf Walk. Yeah. And you start over there yeah. and there's a massive hill comes up to, up yeah. to the tower yeah. and then you go right around over here and then you go right over the hill, back around and then over to the Blue Lake, which is over there. Yeah. So that's her favourite walk until the fires, they collapse some yeah. of the fencing and so on, but that'll be open again soon. No, that's, that's absolutely brilliant. So thank you. And thank you. Appreciate your time and efforts. I love, love the painting, very good painting. <laughs> Any criticism? No. Come no, no, on, no, Marekka, no, you've no. got to have some criticism. Uh, it's beautiful. Oh, you like it? I, I don't like that slab <laughs> beside of the tower there that's sticking You don't like the slab? At the um, steps go up. Right, yep. That grey? Yep. Is that... This one here's lying down, that one's sitting up. Yep, all right. Is that how oh, it's supposed to be? Really. Barbara. Yep. It will it will all be sorted in the end. Oh, Have good. faith. Good. good. You are. So just a bit of detail on how I do these rocks. I I push them forward in using the palette knife and using the depth of field and all the, the standard artist tricks. And now what I'm doing is I'm without going over all of the detail, I primarily try and um, I try and picture in my brain how the light would be hitting each of these rocks so what i'm trying to do here is i'm i'm trying to put myself in the position of thinking right now if the light was hitting at a certain point how would that rock reflect so for example these are some high points of the rock that i'm putting in now probably need to put a little bit more yellow ochre in that to give a highlight but this is just almost a demonstration now you can see these lines here these very fine lines here i'm going to leave them because what i'm going to do is come back with a a finer brush and just put those put those areas in with some detail but i'm just picking up each of the the high points of the rocks and then blending it into the shadow point so it put, basically goes back into the background um, blending with it naturally versus sort of standing out from it um, areas like this for example they can be pushed back these areas here can be pushed back 
and then we start to get a sort of a, a three-dimensional look to to these rocks now if this rock here for example then bends around and comes slightly in front of this rock here then we have just a bit more white <coughs> some white very business okay so this rock here for example I'm gonna put a, a high point on that rock like that this rock here I'm gonna follow this curve around it just naturally forms you start to sort of see shapes in the rocks after a while and then what I'm gonna do is just blend that in using a sort of a almost a cross hatch sort of pattern to keep the rock looking quite uh, formulated. Okay, so now, don't want that to look like a smiley face. We'll just kind of cut that across there like that. There we go. Okay, so now what I need in order to finish this part off is a very fine brush. Uh, just find a very fine brush mm, one with a bit of tooth in it is nice so that's a quite a good one because what are we looking at here this one here is quite a good one because it's got um it's got a saber kind of edge to it so i'll just get my black <coughs> picture if I can. There we go. And then with the black here, just doing this, I'm going to pick up all of these little, it's probably a little bit dark actually, I'll just lighten that off a bit. But I'll pick up all of these existing kind of cracks in the rocks. And then effectively reshaping the rock. I don't want to carry on too much with too much dark on dark, but if I can get some of the cracks to sort of reformulate from where I've got the palette knife underneath, then I start to get some some lovely designs happening. This is follows primarily what is actually happening in nature because if I go back to my picture, these shapes are actually in the in the design itself. So there we go. So we'll just detail the, the darks there. This is a lengthy process, so I won't video the whole thing, but you get the idea. We're just building up the layers now, so continue on. Yeah, good. Oh, you like this out? Yeah, I love the way it's. I actually use uh, like a snowco type of paint as well because what actually this is acrylics and the acrylics are um, water based, uh, but then I now use see oils. So this, for example, Winds and Newton comes from England. And this paint is now going on top of it. Well, it's going to be dry in about four days. And I'm going to do all the balustrading with all of the detail today. And it's going to have little points on the thing. Yeah. Thank you very much. Like this is the bear of Mount Gambia, guys, which he's saying is fantastic. I would like to see more of your work around Mount Gambia. Well, we can arrange that because here's my business card. Would you like a magnet or would you like a car? There you go, both. Perfect. Good eyes. Well done. Thank you. Fantastic. Well, Lovely. Nice. 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 Oh, okay. <laughs> but that's okay because it's why I, I um the stick drawing thing. That's its fallacy because I don't do the sticks either. 
you, what you do is you do blocks of colour. And you see everything in blocks of colour. Like Ian, 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 Ian come out here for a sec. If, we, if we we're going to draw Ian, for example. You realise you're going on Facebook. The, see how the light hits him on an angle? Yes. And if you squint your eyes, you start seeing shapes. Well, that's what you do. That's all it is. Very clever. Very clever. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. It is beautiful. Thank you. You like it? You like it? Yes, I do like it. It really sets the place off. What do you like best about it? Um, well, it's scenery, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So I yeah. like the scenery. You've been up there yourself? What? Classic John moment. Yes. <laughs> Very serious. Oh, he's a classic. All right. So, all right. So now, so say who you are and and, and things like that. Hey, okay. G'day. My name's Neil Tobin. Um, I've lived here all my life. I'm currently 55. Um, as a teenager, I would have swam in that corner of the Valley Lake and possibly walked around to Nurses Landing and jumped off the rock. Uh, absolutely fantastic mural. Awesome. And uh, awesome. Thank you. Love it. Does it bring back memories? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, perfect. A little bit sad because there's no lake there anymore, but... Yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. It just um, pictulates what it is now, and it's absolutely fantastic. Well done. Thank you, Neil. Appreciate your feedback. No worries at all. Thank you very much. So what the next step is is I've got these, these bushes here which are in proportion and so forth to actually how they are. So what I'm going to do is I'm using a little trick. I'm going to use this piece of glass. And if I put the piece of glass, can you just come over here for a sec, Pete? Can you get the reflection of this glass on that video? Come closer if you need to. Can you see it there? Yeah, yeah, you try. Yeah. Can you see it? Yeah. So if I tilt that like that, what I can do is here, for example, I can now shape each of the individual plants. See? So they're yep. going to be exactly the replication of what, right. what is going to be there. So here, for example, if I look at that angle, I only, I'm only just using the shade. And I'm not interested in the highlights yet. But if I go like that, I've got each individual one is correct. Yep. So I'm just going to keep going along here. And then what I could do if I was keen, and I am, is I'll go back in a minute and I'll actually do the highlights in the same direction. But all this stuff, I'll just exaggerate that for the sake of the exercise. But when you look at this now, this will look like it's a mirror image yep. of what it's supposed to be, which is exactly what I wanted. So here, close up here, for example, if you can get in here and be closer. Can you see this reflection here? Okay. Yes, perfect, thank you. So you almost do this without thinking. And then by the time you take it away, it's exactly where it should be. Yeah, yeah, yep. Yeah. Isn't that cool? Yeah, yeah, no problem. There you go. So if we look at the reflection now, the camera's got a bit take it away. Take it to there. Yeah. Yeah. There's the reflection there. We can see yeah. that it's relatively accurate. Sure, the glasses look pretty good. Yeah. 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 Good. I, I can really just uh, behind <laughs> it to see. I wonder who's there. <laughs> well, who's behind it, Jim? Who's behind it, I don't know. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Appreciate that. Yeah. This is one of the most rewarding parts of any painting. Like pulling the tape off. Look at that beautiful edge. 
Oh, perfect. Beautiful. Seven coats of clear later. Now the final stage. Ooh. How awesome is that? 